three statement financial model. Let's look at the components of a three statement financial model. It starts with an assumption section. These are the drivers of the model, such as revenue growth rates, margins, capital expenditures, and balance sheet items. Then there's typically an income statement, which is the starting point for the forecast. Then a balance sheet, a cash flow statement, and supporting schedules that help model things like fixed assets, such as property, plant, and equipment, depreciation, and debt schedules, etc. And then finally, some charts and graphs to visualize the results of the model. Now let's discuss the purpose of a three statement model. There are several purposes. The first is to analyze the historical results of a company. The first step is to put all of the numbers of typically three to five years of history of a company into Excel and look at the trends and analyze the company's financial performance. It then allows the analyst to establish forecast assumptions based on the historical results. From there, you can actually build a forecast of the company. And you can set the foundation for more advanced financial modeling, such as discounted cash flow analysis, sensitivity analysis, M&A, LBO, and other types of transactions. Now let's look at the relevant courses that CFI offers to teach you how to build a three statement model. Any of these three courses, starting with building a financial model in Excel, or FP&A cash flow forecasting, or the e-commerce model, will all teach you to connect the three statements step by step. Now let's flip over to the model and take a closer look. Here we are inside the three statement model. As you can see, it starts with a cover page where there's a description of the model and a table of contents. This table of contents is dynamic, so you can click on the section you want to go to and you'll be taken there automatically. Then within the model, you'll see it's laid out with each of these sections and they're grouped so that you can easily expand and contract the model. It starts with assumptions. Those drive the income statement balance sheet, cash flow, supporting schedules, and finally charts and graphs. Now let's open up all of the sections and take a look at the model. You can see the assumptions very clearly here. Then you have the income statement, balance sheet, cash flow, supporting schedules. In this case, it includes a working capital schedule, depreciation schedule, as well as debt and interest schedule. Then we have some charts that summarize the income statement, and the cash flow statement. So this is the general layout of a three statement model. You can see that it's formatted so that hard coded numbers are blue and formulas are black. To quickly see all of the hard coded versus formula numbers in the model, we can press F5. When we press F5 and we go to special, we're gonna select constants and deselect text so we can see all the numbers that are hard coded. We see that the model flips from the historical period to the forecast period. On the left side of this model here, where we have the historical numbers, they're all hard coded inside the statements and then the assumptions are calculated because these are implied assumptions. Then the model flips and we use the assumptions as hard coded drivers and from those we calculate all of the financial statements. So you can see that everything on the forecast side of the model is all black because it's all formulas entirely driven by these assumptions here. Let's look at how to use this model. This model is designed to be a training model, so it's not super complex. But you can use it to model a real company by changing it so that the financial statements here mirror exactly to the company that you're modeling. And in order to do that, you can just modify this model. Let's look at an example of how to modify the model. Suppose the company that we're modeling has an extra line item on the income statement for marketing expense. What we would do is add the line for marketing expense here, as it appears on the company's financial statements. And then we would go up to the assumptions, insert a row there, and type marketing. And depending on whether or not we want it to be a fixed or variable cost, let's make it a variable cost, so we'll say percent of revenue. So it's helpful to provide that label there. And let's say for this company, it's equal to 5% of revenue. So we can copy that assumption since it was there, that's handy, and fill it right. What we would then do is calculate 
marketing expense as being revenue multiplied by the assumption. And we can fill that right. We can ignore this error because there's not a problem with the formula. It's just that these cells here are blank. And then you make sure that the sum here is capturing the marketing expense that's been added. And that flows through to the net income. And if it flows through the net income, then it goes to the cash flow statement, of course. And if it flows through the cash flow statement, it impacts the closing balance of cash on the balance sheet. And thus it flows through to the balance sheet and we can see that everything's balancing. So that would be an example of how to add an extra expense line item on the income statement here. And of course, you would add the historical numbers here too. I'm not going to add them though because this is all hard coded. It would throw things off for the historical numbers. You would need to then adjust net income. You would need to adjust the balance sheet, etc. But for the forecast, it's very easy to add in new items or delete other items. If the company has no debt and no interest, you could simply remove that item from the forecast. So, so you can modify this model to fit the company that you're trying to build a forecast for.